Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, publisher of the beloved Aspire magazine and host of this transformational show where we have con- I have conversations with extraordinary visionaries who are changing the world in women's lives with their sacred wisdom, their offerings, and their message. And today, I got to tell you, we are talking um, with Mary Jo Rathgeb on a topic that I know is going to resonate with so many of you, because when I first met Mary Jo, and we've had personal conversations, then I had her in my summit. It's the conversation about befriending your money shadows. And the conversations I've had with her were really eye-opening for me on a personal level. And as our conversations deepened, I'm like, so many women, we need to hear this conversation. And yes, sometimes that can be uncomfortable, but I believe that there's wisdom in the wounds, wisdom in our stories, and that's why I wanted Mary Jo here with us today. So if you if you have ever struggled with calling in abundance, with keeping abundance, there could be some shadow emotions actually getting in the way. Because the secret to abundance and prosperity isn't about how you handle your money. It's about how you handle your emotions about money. And as my guest and good friend Mary Jo shares, money often generates fear in other shadow emotions, such as worry, guilt, shame, anxiety, and more. But once you learn how to befriend these uncomfortable emotions, your relationship to money changes for the better, and so do your choices about it. So let's dive in. I want to introduce you to my special guest. As a life transitions coach, professional certified coach, certified RIM facilitator, and IPEC energy leadership master practitioner, and human design consultant, Mary Jo Rathgeb intuitively and compassionately supports women to shine a light on their shadow emotions so they can reclaim the energy and wisdom contained within. This sacred work frees women to be who they really are and not someone that they think they're supposed to be and empowers them to live a life that aligns with their deepest truth. Mary Jo, I am so happy that you're here to join me today. Thank you, Linda. I am so honored to be uh, invited to be a part of your show. It sounds well, wonderful. I got to tell you, Mary Jo, this is a this is such a deep topic. You know, we've had some great conversations personally. You've written for Aspire magazine. You spoke on my summit, mm-hmm. and um, like there's such a depth to this. And so again, we're talking about befriending your money shadows. But why don't we start with that word money is so emotionally charged. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Uh, Money. (laughs) Yes, that's how I started my article. Oh, money. (laughs) (laughs) It's uh, yes, everyone has such an emotional charge to it. I should say most everyone. Maybe there are some people who don't. Um, But we're talking to the people who do today, right, Linda? Mm. It's it's really tied to, um, I mean, I can get really, really geeky on you if you want, <laughs> but it, I mean, it's tied to your deepest um, and most longstanding earliest um, relationships, you know, with the primary caregivers that you had who, you know, you developed a sense of either security and safety from or not, um, or some combination. And so... Um, because money is so important in today's world for a sense of 
safety, security, you know, you need it for food, you need it for housing, you need it for clothes, you need it for all the things that are going to help you be successful in life. And so, so it's really, it's really tied to the very beginnings of your own internal working model of who you are in the world and who others are, and are they going to be able to help you get your needs met? And that includes money. <laughs> so that is, um, that's why we're so emotionally attached to it. So when we are feeling emotionally charged, and you know what, I know I have many times in my life, and sometimes mm -hmm. it can still be, does yeah. that mean that charge is a shadow emotion, like in the background? That charge is a shadow emotion in the background until you understand it. Right. So if you don't understand why you're getting emotionally charged around money, then yes, it's a shadow because it's in your, you know, outside of your awareness. But once you're able to shine a light on it and focus on it, then it, it becomes something that's workable or work with. Yeah, that's insightful because it, like everything in life, right? What we avoid, I think only gets bigger. Right. So you had talked about um, our childhood and mm -hmm. that's where a lot of our unconscious patterns begin. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some examples? Because some of us might go, but I had a great childhood. And, and I think mm -hmm. um, like so many others, I had a complicated childhood, but like I was like mid, low to mid class, middle class. Mm -hmm. but I can remember now that I've done this work, you know, for 30 years, internal work. Mm -hmm. I can look back now and go, look at all the scripts I picked up. Mm -hmm. And then I became a welfare mom and picked up more scripts mm -hmm. and but I can remember some of them. So take us back to like some of the stuff that um, could have happened or the things we heard in childhood that planted the seed of that belief. Well, yeah. So, so basically, um, you know, we are meaning making creatures. <laughs> Humans are right. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's, it's a combination of beliefs that you may have picked up from your family, you know, your, your caregivers, your society, and it's also beliefs you picked up about yourself and about other people and how um, responsive and available and trustworthy they are, and also how worthy you are of receiving from them and whether or not your needs are going to be met. And so some of the beliefs that you may have picked up from other people, you know, could be anything from, you know, money doesn't grow on trees to waste not want not, for instance. But you could have also picked up the belief that my needs aren't as important as other people's and therefore other people deserve more than I do. Or you may have picked up the belief that, um, you know, other people are um not they're not trustworthy and so i can't i can't depend on them and when you think about those beliefs and you insert money for people what happens yeah it it just creates this depth of of a wound i think right and they unconsciously navigating life with it well, you could call it a wound and you could also call it a strategy for managing um, and getting your needs met. And so it becomes a it becomes a pattern that you use in order to manage life, manage your stress, manage your emotions. Some are adaptive and some aren't. <laughs> and what may have worked when you were five years old doesn't work when you're 35 or 50, you know? And so if you are still engaged in these strategies for managing, you know, getting your needs met or not, and managing the stress and the emotions around all that, then that's when they, that's when they become shadow emotions and behaviors. I like that word strategy better than wound. It just seems more empowering. Yes. It, it's like it was an energy shift the moment you said it for me. So I really am glad that you clarified that because it just, mm. it, it is 
what we found worked for us at that time to help us navigate it. Right. You know what, what, what I find funny is we, we, we can have, there could be four children in the same household. Mm -hmm. They live the same life, but all have different money stories. Mm -hmm. So it's big. Is it because we're also all wired emotionally different? So something that that could affect one person doesn't as a child? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody, everyone, you know, this is all based on your own perceptions. And, um, you know, when you are an infant, you are the center of your universe, right? <laughs> yes. And you're just learning that there are other people around you. And the first people that you're learning from are your primary caregivers. You could be learning from your siblings. You could be learning from other family members. But the the primary one is, the first one is that is that initial primary caregiver. And, and so that they may actually respond differently to different children in the family too. That's true. I think we can all, those with a lot of siblings, we can all relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, and also, you know, I'm not, you know, going to get into all sorts of things, but it's like, you know, the birth order, the, you know, like, what are the circumstances in the family, you know, when one child is an infant versus when, you know, the next few come along <laughs> and, um, you know, so what's going on in the family there? Are you in the same situation? Are you living in a different state? Are you, you know, have you upwardly um you know moved up in the world it's like what are the resources and and so so there's all sorts of different reasons why people you know even if siblings growing up in the same family have different experiences even in the same event yeah and i hear that time and time again in my work with women so so glad that we're covering that and i thought it was really important that we start with with where they come from to give women an understanding that it's like we've picked it up over time mm -hmm. as well as choices that we make so we're going to take our first break we come back in a moment we will continue this conversation stay with us my friend inspiration for a woman's soul aspire magazine inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery claim your free digital subscription today which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me today is Life Transitions Coach Mary Jo Rathgeb, and we're talking about befriending your money shadows. So we talked about where we can pick them up from. Mm -hmm. And then how do we know, because one of the things that was really big for me, um, and I, I know it was some of the childhood stuff, but then I became a welfare mom around 21 or 22. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of shame and energy around that. So I know that for me, that shame and guilt really fed my money stories for probably another 10 years. Mm -hmm. 20 to 30 now of course I'm saying that now because hindsight's 2020 right I didn't know that that's were the shadow beliefs that were causing me to keep co-creating these sabotaging patterns so how do we know if we're carrying guilt to shame on the topic of money well how did you know <laughs> let me turn that around on you like oh good one um well I think it was I I really started to go okay, Lynn, you're the only common denominator in your own life. Mm -hmm. Money, like I, everyone thought I was a master manifester even back then, but I couldn't keep it, Mary Jo. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. um, so everything would come to me. And then as I, I didn't think I was going to heal my money story, I was actually working on my own internal healing from childhood stuff. Mm -hmm. Realized that, oh my goodness, I see in that healing period, I found that I was not allowing myself to receive it because I didn't think I was worthy. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so even though I wasn't working on my money story, 
in in therapy, I was working on healing worth, and then I realized, oh my God, no wonder I can manifest and not hold on to it. Because right. I would push it, the money away or the abundance away or the opportunity away because it was like, oh, who am I to receive this? Yeah. Is that a big one that you see? Yeah. I mean, that's that's huge. And and the and the guilt and the shame, you know, that's attached to to that is the, you know, it, it could be multifaceted. And, you know, tell me if this resonates where it's like you know, you, you know, that you're this supposed to be this manifester, this great manifester, you're able to call in the money and yet you're not able to hang on to it. Mm. Which yeah, that was my sense, in my sense of shame, like, oh my, you know, like what is wrong with me? Yeah. I was judging myself because it would come and then it would be gone. And then mm -hmm. I'd be back in the same financial straights that I was and I kept going why does this keep happening so yeah. of course what did I do I internalized thinking something's wrong with me right and I actually for many years believe it or not and now I will use the phrase so people understand my life before mm -hmm. but I used the label and actually embodied the label looking back in my early 20s so we're going back almost 40 years mm -hmm. as financial misfit I used to, I'm, I'm just a financial misfit. It's like I took on that persona <laughs> almost yeah. as a, like, oh, that's just me. Right. Do people right. take on those kind of energetic labels? Yes. Yeah. And, and so, so the, the strategies that you adapt can become what feels like personality traits. Yeah, that, that, that speaks to what I was feeling at that time, like, because mm -hmm. my sister was always financially responsible for even from a young age, and she's mm -hmm. two years younger than me, and I'd be like, what the heck? You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. And I see now looking back, I, I took on that persona, that strategy, mm -hmm. almost as um, I think it was trying to give myself an out to be if I look back, mm -hmm. like, okay, you, you, you've you tried to change, it's not working, just accept that this is who you are. And mm -hmm. then in my, I think, energy field, I didn't have to keep trying because I took on the label of this is just who I am. Right, right. And, and so that's where, you know, the whole idea of guilt and shame, you know, the definitions, you know, the quick definition of guilt is, you know, I did something wrong or bad, and I feel bad about it. Shame is I am bad or wrong. Mm. Then, then I, I, I t if given that definition, I'd say in my twenties and thirties it was shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just as you described it, that was that's what just dropped in. Mm -hmm. So it was the energy of shame. Like, why can't I get this right? Why there was so many layers of it. Right. Do you see that guilt and or shame? are two of the deepest core beliefs or there are there others that the majority struggle with well i would say that guilt and shame are the heaviest of the you know core beliefs so if you are carrying either guilt or shame those will be the heaviest does that make sense oh resonate yeah resonates for me it's a yeah a weight yes yeah and that when you can you know relieve yourself of that energetic weight then it, it is much easier to you know to really be able to just be who you are in in reality <laughs> in truth as opposed to taking on that persona that story of I am a misfit financially yeah, that was a big one. I, I didn't release that. I'm I'm just going to be 62. I probably released that around 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And don't, I, I did the work off and mm -hmm. on for 20 years, but it was like layer upon layer would come up and like, like right. damn, I thought I had this already. Yeah. And now we know we're always unfolding, right? The next layer of healing. Um, yeah. Always being revealed. So if guilt and shame are the heaviest, mm -hmm. what are some of the others? 
Well, I would say undeservability, unworthiness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have the unworthy or undeservable, it's like, I don't deserve it, you know? And so it's like you push it away or avoid it. Um, you know, you may also put others needs ahead of yourself so it's like oh you know i'm not as important so someone else needs this more than i do or they need they need my help <laughs> you know for free let's say or for low cost if you're you know trying to build a business and having trouble charging money you know for your fees let's say it's more like oh i'm doing this for the other person you just hit one for me because um, Aspires are 18 years old as of actually as of the day we're taping the show mm -hmm. and she was print for the first three years and it was a service project for me it was something that I was given in a vision and I delivered it but I was at that point of healing the wound still remember I said I was about 40 yes. yeah and you know, women would want to advertise. As I said, we were regional, local, more brick and mortar places. And mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, you can't afford it. That's okay. Well, damn, I had to pay the print bill. Right. And I was doing that. I got to tell you, Mary Jo, constantly. And I see now it was, there was that wound. That was the, that's when I really did the, the I don't want to say the final, because I don't think we're ever really there, but the deepest work is if if I am committed to aspire, which I was, mm -hmm. if I don't heal this wound, aspire cannot survive. Right. I can't I can't keep giving the space away mm -hmm. because of something inside me, right? right. Yeah. And I had a healer, and because I was so committed to the vision and mission of aspire, um, I really had to face all that. Because, you know, we like to kind of hide it and bury it. Like, oh, I'll look at that next week. Yes. <laughs> right. Oh, you know, yeah. I was really good at that. But yeah. Aspire meant so much to me. I knew it was my soul's purpose that I go, Lynn, you, you got to do this. Mm. And 18 years later, thriving and and truly blessed. But I, if I didn't do that work, and um, because I serve so many entrepreneurs all women in the spiritual and personal development field mm -hmm. Mary Jo I can say I see that all the time yes I either see that the abundance doesn't come in or they have so much fear about being seen mm -hmm. that they keep themselves from attracting abundance so is that another cycle not just for entrepreneurs is like not showing up fully in your own life yeah I mean that's that's really about you know, your own expectation of, you know, or belief in yourself, you know, like, am I, am I someone who, you know, can handle this? Can I be responsible with money? Can I take, you know, do I want that responsibility? Or would I actually rather depend on other people? I mean, there, there's that as well, as far as, um, you know, can I stand in my power own my gifts and my talents and ask and receive the money that is commensurate with it. Mm. It really resonates. It resonates from conversations I've had with clients, but also my my own journey. And I'm pretty transparent. I mean, everyone knows. I, I tell people, listen, I've had it all, lost it all, rebuilt it all, and almost lost it all again. And I know, and that's over, you know, since probably 1992 when I first became an entrepreneur. Right. Um, and I can look back at those times when I was in the valley, you know, like, mm -hmm. what the heck? The, those are the times that another layer was coming up for me to heal. So do you find that, like, just from my conversations, I feel like when we open to doing the shadow emotions work, Mm -hmm. we actually save ourselves so much time mm -hmm. like and if I even knew this type of work existed I might not have had as many valleys with my money story because I didn't understand what the, I had unconscious beliefs in the background mm -hmm. have you found that to be true too like uh, when we work with our money 
uh, shadow emotions that I don't want to say it accelerates the healing, but it, it releases the weight we're carrying. Well, it, I mean, I think that it certainly, it, it, it does both. <laughs> I think it does both. And the, um, the journey that everyone is on is obviously different. And when you talk about the peaks and valleys, if you will, you know, one of the, one of the, um, keys to, to really having what's called a secure attachment, let's call it to money or anything else is actually being able to, um, have it leave and come back, you know, rupture and repair. So it's not necessarily about everything being perfect all the time, but it's about being able to understand that there's a natural ebb and flow and that things, you know, that money can go out, it can come in, it can go out, it can come in, and that it's not going to turn into a crisis. Oh, that's a good one. Yes, I can feel that one. I want everyone to sit with that for a moment. We're going to take um, another break and we'll come back. We're going to talk about that ebb and flow. And well, that was just a powerful insight because I think we get we get afraid, and I'll speak for my truth, when there's an ebb. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we're going to be right back, my friends, I promise you. Um, we're going to be talking about the ebb and flow and the energies behind it, because I just got an insight from my own journey. So thank you, Mary Jo. And we'll, we'll be back in a moment. Inner peace, joy, and fulfillment are yours, even if they feel out of reach. When you learn to befriend your shadow emotions instead of avoiding or stuffing them, you free yourself of self-sabotaging patterns, beliefs, and habits that keep you from living your most authentic life. As a life transitions coach, professional certified coach, certified RIM facilitator, IPEC energy leadership master practitioner, and human design consultant, Mary Jo Rathkeb intuitively and compassionately supports women to shine a light on their shadow emotions so they can reclaim the energy and wisdom contained within. This sacred work frees women to be who they really are and not someone they think they are supposed to be and empowers them to live a life that aligns with their deepest truth. Learn more at MaryJoRathkeb.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Today we're talking all about our shadow emotions, money shadows, why it's important to befriend them. And maybe Joe, right before that break, you said something about the ebb and flow and um, knowing that like that's the cycle. Mm -hmm. What I felt in my body was when I was in those valleys that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. I think it, if I was afraid to be in the valleys, which we'll call the ebb, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I hadn't come to the point of trust in understanding that it's energy, which is an ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. So I was out of trust that yes. I was supported. Yes. And, and so when I, as you were sharing that moment, I immediately saw the, the me before who was in the valley and, and was petrified, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the person I am now, which completely energetically knows that it's ebb and flow and when i'm in the ebb there's such a trust of oh lynn you've been here so many times before you know what's coming mm -hmm. like the ocean right yes so i think and i'll just speak for myself from, from law of attraction when we're in the ebb and go into fear and lose our trust then it's harder for the flow to come back in because there's an energetic wall. Right. Is, like built is that in kind of dam. Yeah, that that was really powerful. I just saw my before and after and in that valley I was not in trust. Mm -hmm. So you help your clients understand that it's all natural to be in ebb and flow when it comes to abundance. Is right. That right. But it's also it's also important to be in honest relationship <laughs> with the ebb and flow and what i mean by that is you know by actually facing 
the situation, facing the fears, facing whatever those shadows are, and really getting real with it. And so what I mean by that is like, you know, if you are in an ebb and you are in fear because you don't trust that money will ever come back, right? It left you, it abandoned you, it's never coming back. You need to face that and look at it and really get real with how true is that? Is that true? And what about this situation, you know, is in your control and what is not? And taking responsibility for what you can do about it. Oh, I love that. So basically you're saying use it as a the learning experience mm -hmm. to uncover the muck, right? That brought us there in the first place. Is that an accurate description? Yes. And and well, I like to call it the reality check, <laughs> which yeah. is, you know, it's like getting real, you know, with yourself and what is happening. And also knowing that the ebb and the flow are a natural, a natural process and cycle. Everything cycles. Um, we all, you know, we know that, right? Um, and and so, but also really knowing that it's not about I lost everything and therefore I am a failure somehow and I need to, you know, rebuild. It's it's more about, you know, I lost everything and I have the capacity and the resilience to rebuild. Yeah. I love that reframe of failure because um, when I lost everything way back mm -hmm. over 30 years ago, I carried that that weight of guilt and shame, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I started a, I've had multiple businesses. When I started another business, it was a mobile spa party company. I I was so passionate about it. I loved it. My daughter was an esthetician. We would go into people's homes, turn it into a Zen experience. Mm. And I, I loved it. I was passionate about it. And I was afraid all the time that I was going to make the same mistake as before. Mm. Right? Mm. So it was like this this I don't know give take freeze it mm. was like I wasn't in ebb and flow because I was always that natural rhythm I could feel that I was constricted all of the time mm -hmm. yeah. isn't it funny you know like this conversation it's helping me identify some of the things that you're teaching us <laughs> and it's it's been so insightful for me as I know it is for the listeners mm -hmm. I had to face that in order to heal, in order to keep this beautiful business I have now going for 18 years in this, in the more natural rhythm of ebb and flow and stop constricting myself yeah. as I did for many years. But that was one of my strategies that I must have picked up mm -hmm. many years ago is like that, that freeze, don't make any decisions because you might make the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the flip yeah. side, every decision can be reversed. That's the truth. So the truth is I wasn't a failure. I learned from it. But isn't it funny, the stories we take along that, that can weigh us down? Yeah. And and the stories that you tell yourself about yourself, you know, can be the things that weigh you down <laughs> the most, right? And, and so when you're, or not being not being willing to look at what the stories are even and not being aware of what the stories are because if you're just living you know with those stories running your running the show there's you're not going to be able to change them yeah you know what i noticed too isn't it funny? So when I had those labels, when I owned those labels, right? Mm -hmm. Financial misfit, mm -hmm. mom, I was owning them as a label. So of course I had the guilt and shame in my energy field that went with them. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think we, I believe we all have this tendency. It's like, well, I don't want people to know that part of my life. Mm. Then, so then that's shadow stuff. Mm -hmm. It's more shame. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll never forget, going, oh God, it was before Dana, so before 30 years ago, I got off welfare, I got a great job, I went through a state job training program and got the first corporate job that I applied for. Well, that became, in Massachusetts, a success story for the department. 
And mm -hmm. I started getting asked to do motivational speaking. And I'm like, what are you people crazy? <laughs> and one of the talks I did was in front of a group of women who had been on welfare and some had really struggled with a bunch of other stuff. And in that moment of me sharing, I remember something healed because I said, you know what? If I can share my story and one woman in that room can believe in her possibility and in herself. Mm. And I shared it and something healed in me that day. I go, I am so done. I am not those things that happened. I am not those choices I made. Right. That began my job. That could begin my healing of, I am not hiding any aspect of who I am. They are not who I am. They are just experiences I had. Right. Was that the shift that you're talking about? Is Absolutely. Yeah, it that began my healing journey. And now here I am all these years later, and my whole brand is about authenticity and storytelling. And I know that when we change our story, we change our lives. Mm -hmm. And so internally, I didn't do anything. Like, I didn't consciously go, I'm going to release the guilt and shame. But I kind of changed the story. So is that what you help clients do and all the work you do as... um you know, a rim facilitator, energy leadership, master practitioner, the list goes on. Well, yeah, I mean, particularly, you know, like when we're talking about rim, um, we do both. So, and it or and it happens organically. Um, and so it's, you know, in inside all of us, we have in, what in rim we call the emotional operating system, which is a organic healing system um, for people. And so with the with the use of the imagination your your own imagination you're able to use that as a translator between your logical brain and your and your emotional body and what it does is you're able to you're able to release damned emotions stuck emotions um that have been with you for however long they've been there and they organically will regenerate a new emotional feeling, a new positive emotional feeling, and a new story around the situation. And so even though nothing has changed, the facts are the facts, the emotional memory is now different. And because of that, you have a new story about yourself. That is powerful. And I know from our conversations, um, those rim sessions and that work are powerful. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to take a moment now because I want to invite everyone while we're in the middle of this conversation to go to maryjoerathgeb.com. But you have a free gift called Five Reasons to Befriend Your Shadow Emotions. Mm -hmm. So ladies, I want to make sure I got that in because I want you to get that e-guide. One, it's going to give you some more information about everything we're talking about today. But more than that, you'll be in Mary Jo's community. You will learn about her services in conversations like this, content like this, and of course, her supportive services. And when you get the Befriend Your Shadow Emotions guide, you'll also, um, this is like a bonus in the back end, have an opportunity to have um, a call in session with Mary Jo. So Mary Jo, if they want to learn about your rim sessions mm -hmm. um, they can also find that or reach out to you during that complimentary call absolutely yeah yeah because i think um just the reason i wanted to bring that up ladies is if you keep struggling with something over and over again and you know or you feel you've done your best to get through it yourself open your arms to receive help and support uh, that's how i changed my life mm -hmm. and this rim facilitator, as a rim facilitator, that's what Mary Jo does. And she has so many other gifts that she brings to the table. But why keep struggling with um, the same patterns over and over? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it was really important for me to say that because I did that for so long. I tried to do things myself. And now I open the support of others. And uh, we're going to, I just noticed the time, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back for the last segment, my friends. And we're going to talk more about um, some of the ways we can befriend our money fears and start that conversation. 
We'll be back in a moment, my friends. Are you feeling the call to unleash your feminine wisdom, hone your empathic gifts, and rise as the goddess you are? You're not alone, my beautiful friend. Crystal Cockerham, spiritual mentor and certified red tent facilitator, trained in both shamanic and priestess practices, works with awakened, empathic women around the world to unlock their shackles of pain, shame, and self-condemnation so they can reclaim their sovereignty and liberate themselves from the world's perceptions. As the founder of Wisdom Awakens and an international best-selling author, Crystal uses her own intuitive blend of spiritual midwifery and energy healing to support women on their journey of transformation. You'll find supportive guidance and community in Crystal's programs, retreats, and sacred offerings. If you're feeling the call to embrace your feminine power, learn more about Crystal's supportive services at crystalcockerham.com. Welcome back. You are listening to Inspired Conversations. With me is Mary Jo Rathgeb. And Mary Jo, why don't we talk about just a couple of the ways um, that we can begin to befriend our money fears or any other shadow emotions surrounding money? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I started, I started talking about it um, in an earlier segment, um, which I am now calling the reality check. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it really starts by, you know, taking an honest assessment of, you know, what the situation is really and naming that for yourself. And then once you're able to name it, you're able to give it its own, you know, separate identity, if you will, right? It, it kind of creates a space between it's no longer me, it's this situation. And then face it and really just kind of lean into, okay, what is this fear? What is this fear about? And spend time actually listening to what the fear actually has to say. It's adopting a attitude of this fear is here to protect me. It wants me to survive and it wants me to be safe. And so if those two things are true, then what is it trying to do? Hmm. I'm going to pause there <laughs> for a reaction. Yeah, and it's almost like you're... Um... It's like you're having a conversation with it in a way you're listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, you know, if you, if you avoid the fear, if you run away from it, if you fight it, if you try to kill it off, <laughs> um, then it's basically you are not going to be able to receive the, the protective um, intentions. And so if you, if you adopt the stance that it's not my enemy, it's actually trying to help me, then you can look at it from a, a, from a attitude of like, okay, I know you're trying to help me. What, what is going on and what are you trying to protect me from? Or, you know, like, let's, let's get under the cover here and figure out what what is going on and once you're able to do that then you're able to say ah okay um now i understand what this part is trying to do for me and um usually the the fear the fearful parts are again you know younger aspects of yourself that you know had a strategy <laughs> and usually that that strategy would work for them when you were very little but they aren't so much anymore and you know just like you wouldn't want to avoid or you know get rid of a five-year-old child who's scared you wouldn't want to do that with your fear either oh, i love that especially when you said you want to do that to a five-year-old child while well, within us is that five-year-old wounded child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That five-year-old is scared and it's trying its best to protect you. And so it's just a matter of, you know, 
being able to, you know, embrace that child and be like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, I'm older now, I'm wiser, I'm more resourced, I'm more resilient. And we don't have to do this like that way anymore. In fact, we're not going to. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you can't come for the ride. You know, you are a welcome and respected part um, that's going to come for the ride with me. But you're not driving. Yeah, it was just the, the visual. <laughs> like, <okay>. Right. <laughs> I'm get in the back seat. I'm taking the walk. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, it's so powerful because it, w one of the things too is we've always heard that you know you, you can try to smother something you're afraid of, but when mm -hmm. you avoid it, what happens? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Just turn to face it. There was a meme about five years ago. It was a beautiful visual. And I'm like, that's it, right? What we shine a light on gets smaller. Mm -hmm. So friending the shadow emotions is, is like you said, a reality check. Talking, mm -hmm. coming in to find out what it really has to say. And a few minutes left. I, I want to talk about something you shared in when you wrote for Aspire magazine. Mm -hmm. Or it may have been in the Elevate Summit that you spoke in. And it was about that underneath everything that we're holding down are also our gifts and wisdom. Because when we're mm -hmm. smothering something that we're trying to avoid, the good stuff gets down there too. Can you talk about that quickly? Yes. Yes. So so when you when you are pushing some aspect of yourself out, right? Um it gets put in the closet, let's call it just for, you know, the visual. <laughs> um, but what ends up happening is, is that there are qualities that get put in the closet, you know, let's say with a fear um, and, you know, or the grief or the sadness or the anger. Let's use anger um, as an example. You know, when you, when you suppress or repress your anger, for instance, what gets swept in the closet is not only that, that uncomfortable rage um, kind of energy, but also the ability to say no and have boundaries and be passionate. And so there are so many qualities that are positive, that are bound up in these uncomfortable emotions that when you don't um, face them and befriend them, you lose those qualities or uh, access to those qualities as well. That was a big insight for me when I read that article. I was like, ooh, think about it. So there's there's gifts and wisdom when we take the time to befriend our money shadows. Mm -hmm. So I have loved this entire conversation. I just, I don't know, I find it all so fascinating um, how the human psyche is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like these kind of conversations, I get all excited. So I want to invite everyone to please visit MaryJoRathgeb.com. It's all in the show notes. Be sure to download your free gift called Five Reasons to Befriend Your Shadow Emotions. When you receive that, you will see an invitation. And if you are ready to befriend your shadow emotions and get that type of support, Mary Jo is your gal. You, all those details will be in the e-guide. Stay um, connected with her stay in the community you don't have to do this alone you are worthy of receiving you are worthy of healing so Mary Jo thank you thank you for the work you're doing in the world and for this insightful conversation thank you Linda it's my pleasure and I also just want to say that you know really we're wired to do this with other people so doing it alone actually isn't going to work <laughs> Take it from someone who tried, ladies. Take it from someone who tried. <laughs> so thank you, my friend. And until next time, ladies, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, 
along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.